Hello, honors. All right. We're going to go over the rest of this worksheet for you um, so that you can work on finding empirical formulas and molecular formulas. Okay, find the empirical formula of a compound containing 32 grams of bromine and 4.9 grams of magnesium. Okay, so remember the process of finding an empirical formula. First, you've got to get um, the numbers to moles, convert them to moles. Once you get them to moles, then you divide by the smallest mole. Okay, and then it helps you find the ratios, and then you apply those ratios to the elements to show how many there are of each. Okay, so for this one, we're going to have a 32 grams of bromine, and we've got 4.9 grams of magnesium. Okay, so we're converting these first to moles. And so we'll go ahead and work on bromine first. So converting it to moles, bromine. And remember the bottom matches. So we've got grams of bromine. And so it's bromine over bromine. The mole on top is going to be a one. And then the grams for bromine, you need your periodic chart. And so we would go ahead and look at that and go down to bromine and over to bromine. Okay, bromine is 79.90, 79.90. And so we'll go back, 79.90. Okay, so we've got, oops, I just lost my thing. Okay, sorry about that. So we've got 32 grams of bromine, converting it to moles, grams of bromine on the bottom. And we just looked up bromine, said it was 79.90, one mole on the top. So we're calculating this, and we would come up with 0.401 and now we've got the magnesium 4.9 grams of magnesium and we are converting that to moles also and we've got grams of magnesium on the bottom so if you look up magnesium on the periodic charts 24.31 So we finish this one out and we've got roughly around 2, 0.202. Okay, and then you're dividing by the smallest mole, which is 0.202. So you figure dividing by itself, of course, it's going to equal a 1. This one, roughly, okay, is going to equal a 2, right? And so it's a 2 to 1 ratio. So we need 2 bromine for every 1 magnesium. So if we wrote magnesium and then Br2, which makes sense if you remember the oxidation number of bromine is a negative one, magnesium is a plus two, makes sense, right? Okay, let's go ahead and look at the next one. A compound was analyzed and found to contain 22.23% of nitrogen, 1.600 times or um, percent of hydrogen and 76.17% of oxygen. What is the empirical formula of compound? So remember, um, these are all percentages that would roughly add up to 100%. And so we could easily just look at that instead of 100%, we could say 100 grams. And so we could easily look at these all in grams and convert them to moles. Okay, so if you're given something in percentage, just change it to grams out of 100 grams, and we can still do the same process, okay? So you're gonna do the same process um, here, and so you're gonna have the nitrogen, 22.23, 22 
0.23 nitrogen, okay, and 1.600 hydrogen in the 76.17% of oxygen. Okay, once you convert those to moles, you should have one point, around 1.587 moles uh, for nitrogen, okay? And you also would get around 1.587 moles for hydrogen. And then the oxygen, we got um, 4.761 moles, okay? So dividing by the smallest, smallest mole, uh, we've got a one, one, and you should have around a three ratio, okay? And so, um, let's see. Usually, um, this could have an H first nitrogen. The most electronegative is always last, so oxygen, because it isn't always a negative oxidation number. We're gonna put that last. So we would put H, N, O, and then oxygen has a three on it, so H, N, O, three. Okay, if you wrote it out of order, it's okay. As long as you have the correct um, numbers there, you're good, okay. Okay, let's go ahead and look at a compound composed of hydrogen and oxygen is found to be 0.59 grams of hydrogen and 9.40 grams of oxygen. The molar mass of this compound is 34.0 grams um, per mole. Now, it says find the empirical and then the molecular formulas. Even if they didn't tell you that, once you see this, you know they want to go to molecular formula, okay? Um, and so just seeing that right there, um, the molar mass tells you we can find the molecular formula. Okay, so first we would end up um, converting these to moles, obviously. So we've got our 0.59 grams of hydrogen, 9.4 grams of oxygen, okay. So once we convert those to moles, um, we're going to have roughly around the same number, okay? So 1.587, 1.587, okay? Um, actually, I'm not, I, never mind, I'm looking at the wrong, um, yeah, that doesn't make any sense. Okay, looking at the wrong area, sorry. Okay, so we're going to have for hydrogen, we'll come up with 0.585, 585, and then still roughly the same though. Um, oxygen is 0.5875, um, okay, so very, very close. They are so close because those numbers are so small, it's a one-to-one -one ratio, okay. And so you could write it as OH, we know OH is uh, hydroxide, but this is not an ion, so this is the empirical formula, but it's, it would not be an accurate formula for something. So we could have um, OH or HO, okay. Once we do the molecular formula, it makes it more easier to understand what they were doing. Um, it'll probably jog your memory about a compound we've talked about before, okay. And so let's go ahead and, so we've got our, OH, okay, it's a one to one ratio. So OH, empirical. Okay, we're given our molecular formula here. So we've got our 34.0 grams per mole. And we've got to divide that by the empirical formula grams. Okay, so we know one oxygen is 16 point grams, um, one hydrogen is 1.008 grams, so we've got our 17.008 grams, okay? And so we're going to go ahead and divide that. And <clears throat> when you divide that, you're going to roughly get around, obviously, two, right? Okay, and so let's do, let me write that in there so you can see you divide it. Okay, and we're going to get a two. So we're going to add this to, to the OH. So we multiply that by the one and one ratio. So the molecular formula is O2 
H2. Okay, but if we reverse that, H2O2, hopefully that looks familiar. That's our hydrogen peroxide where we talked about one of those exceptions where oxygen is a negative one oxidation number. And so it's an OH empirical, H2O2 is our uh, molecular formula. Okay, let's go ahead and move on down. <clears throat> Sorry, I had a little tickle in my throat. Okay, molar mass of a compound, <clears throat> 92 grams per mole. So right there tells you we're gonna need to find molecular formula. Analysis of a sample of the compound indicates that it contains 0 0.606 grams of nitrogen, 1.390 grams of oxygen. Find its empirical and molecular formulas. So remember empirical formula, we're first going to convert to moles, of course. Okay, so we've got our nitrogen and our oxygen. Once we convert them to moles, our nitrogen, we're gonna have 0.04 Three, three, okay, and the oxygen is going to be 0 0.0869, um, so again, um, very small numbers, but nitrogen is the smallest, so we would divide by that, and we can roughly see that we're going to get around a two, okay, and of course a one up here, so it's a one to two ratio, so we'd have NO, Two is our empirical formula, okay? Now we're gonna use our molar mass to find um, the remaining with our empirical mass. So we've got our 92 grams per mole, okay, for the molecular formula, and we've gotta find the empirical mass. We've got oxygen is 16 times two, nitrogen's 14.01, okay? So adding those up, it's going to be 46.01 um, grams per mole, okay? And you can see it's roughly um, going to be basically a 2, right? Okay, so we've got NO2 as empirical, and then we're going to multiply those by 2 to get our molecular. So now we have N2. O four, okay, and so hopefully that helps you. These were a little bit easier um, once I calculated the quiz ones. I realized hmm, these are a little confusing, a little off. Let me go ahead. I told you I'd um, go over that with you. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Let me go ahead and bring up that worksheet. Let's see, that was your homework worksheet. Okay, so let me go ahead and see if I can find that. There we go. And it was towards the end where these were a little, I didn't like the problem, they're a little wonky. Um, <clears throat> so actually let me go ahead and get my answer sheet since I did send you an answer sheet. Let me go ahead and find that one. So. There we go. Okay, let's let's look at the answers instead. Um, there we go, the ones I sent out to you. That way I can talk about those last few problems. Um, looks like 17 was not confusing. 18 was not confusing. It's when we get to the aspirin, the acetyl salicylic um, acid, 100 grams of aspirin. Um, when you get to their moles, so let me go ahead and, so here we had a mole for carbon roughly 2.249, and of course the mole for hydrogen um, ended up being, um, actually let's look at, um, 
initially the mole was 4.996 for carbon, 4.444 for hydrogen, okay? And then we had 2.22 for oxygen. So dividing all three of those, um, we roughly came up with, this roughly came up with a two, of course, of course a one. The one that caused some confusion was this ox, um, carbon, carbon right here because it's a 2.249. And um, if we went with those, you know, we could obviously round that down to a two and that would be two, two, one. Okay. Um, which some of you did. And that's no problem because like I said, this was not clear enough. Um, if you remember back when Melissa Maribel, she talked about some of the numbers, like if you had a 1.5 as a number, you would double that and then it would be a three, okay? Um, or if you had a 1.33, 1 1 right? You could triple that and then that 33 would turn into a number, right? But this was 0.25, basically, 0.25. And so really, um, what they wanted you to do was multiply this by four because this is um, 2.25 basically multiplied by four that 2.25 turns into the next number okay so this would have went up to a nine so if you multiply that one by four you multiply the hydrogen by four multiply the oxygen by four so you would have had a nine eight and a two okay um, so either one if this were on the test and I gave it to you and realized it was kind of like this, I would have given you credit if you had that two, two, one, that would have been no problem. And then what is the molecular formula? So again, adding up that empirical formula, it's 180.2 over 148.154, it looks like. Okay, so you come up with that 1.216. So I'm thinking, okay, well, it's kind of close to that 0.25, but not. Um, so here in the book, they did it. Um, multiply by four to get to the next number, I guess, because it's not close enough to the 0.25. But again, how would you know that, right? How would anybody know that? Um, and so they basically kept this one at one. So they rounded down to the one C9H8O2, okay? Um, and so therefore, uh, you would have gotten credit no matter what if you had went with the original um, 221 because you wouldn't have known this unless, um, like I said, it, it being at 2.249 was just not clear enough. I don't think so, okay. But I wanted to explain that to you so you at least know um, if you saw problems like this that you could double or triple them um, or quadruple them until they all get to whole numbers, okay. So anything that's not um, clear, like a two or a one or a three, um, but you have that 0 0.25, 0 0.33, 0 0.5, you can double, triple uh, until you get whole numbers for everything. And um, like I said, in this case, if you did that, you would have got it correct. If you didn't do that, you would have gotten it correct. Okay, so hopefully this helps you with these problems. Um, I hope you all do very well. Um, and this is your, like your last chapter test um, for this year. Wow, you guys have made it. Uh, we're a little behind, um, wanted to get further this year, obviously. Um, I'm going to try to think of some fun things for you guys to do, hopefully, maybe a little lab thing at home uh, for next week after the test. Okay, um, have a good time, take care, be safe, and I'll talk to you guys later.